Uh, my name is Amy Coates. I'm an immigration attorney with Basham Spiro in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm here with our managing partner, Morali Basham. Hello, everybody. And today we're going to be talking to you uh, about a family immigration topic, how to sponsor your spouse or fiancé. Thank you for joining us. So then Morali and I wanted to talk a little bit about what the pros and cons of, a, the, uh, of all these different options are. Okay, so Morali, what would you do? What would I do? Yeah. Uh, in what situation? Let's say, are you talking about if I was engaged okay. with somebody overseas? Yeah, let's say that you had been teaching English in Japan, mm -hmm. and you had to come back because your contract was over. You left your girlfriend back in Japan, but, you know, you're going crazy. You, you, need, you guys want to get married. What would you do? What route would you take? Well, it really depends on one thing, Amy, and I'd say how long the process takes between right. a fiancé visa and a permanent resident you know, right. process, and how much the immigration attorney I talk to charges <laughs> for each step. Exactly. So here's what I always tell people, and it's from my perspective as an immigration attorney who's not emotionally involved, I'm thinking about trying to minimize how much you spend, and that on the day that your loved one steps foot on the U.S. on U.S. soil, that they have the easiest time possible. So for me, not being emotionally involved, I would go with on your on the PowerPoint here, number two. I would go get married and then I'd come back and I would file for an immigrant, you know, immigrant visa petition for them. So that on the day that my husband stepped foot on U.S. soil, he would have his green card, he'd be ready to work immediately, he could come and go as he pleased, and I'd only be paying one attorney fee. But Morali, even though I say, I say the same thing to everyone I meet with, guess which one they choose? The Number the one, exactly. And why is that it? Because, you know, they get here faster and it's a lot easier to get it filed. They don't have to go anywhere to get married. They can just file all the paperwork because usually this is when they've just been back from a trip. Like they've come back from a trip proposing. They're ready to get married. They just saw their fiancé. They don't have time to go back and get married again and file all this. And so the quickest way to get someone here is on a fiancé visa. It's the quickest and the easiest. But the problem is, is that once your fiancé gets here, you've got a, another completely almost equal set of paperwork to be filed. Your fiance cannot work right away. Your fiance cannot travel right away. Um, and you got to pay another attorney fee too. Right. But, you know, when you're looking, at least they're here though. Right, they're fiance. here. But it only say it, it saves, again, from my perspective, it probably saves about three, three months. But from the client's perspective to them, three months is forever. And almost an eternity. So you're talking about, let's say, starting from scratch, the whole fiancé visa process to get your fiancé here versus going ahead and getting married overseas and coming back and filing the I-130 and starting the green card process. Mm -hmm. You're talking only a three-month difference between the two of them? On today, April 14th. <laughs> but, but that's right. just today. If you asked me that a year and a half ago, my answer would be completely different. If you asked me that, you know, six months from now, my answer could be completely different. So the problem with all these processing times is that if you want to know how long things are going to take for the petition that you have to file, if you're going, to, if you want to know how long that's going to take here in the U.S., I can tell you that pretty easily. They're processing charts that they publish, but once that petition is filed, remember it's got to go to an embassy, and at the point where it goes to an embassy, it's very hard to tell you how long it's going to take because all these embassies are different. For example, there was a point in time where in the Dominican Republic. Once the petition got to the embassy, it took a year. Whereas if that same petition had gone to uh, London, it might have taken three months. So there can be a drastic difference at the embassy. And that's something, you know, that is a good question to ask an immigration attorney, you know, if you're deciding which process to take and depending on the country that your spouse or fiance is in, definitely ask whether um, they have any idea how long it's going to take once it gets to the second stage of the process. Right, and that's, you know, when a client comes in for initial consultation, we look at all the charts together. But I would say, depending on the country, it is conceivable, probably not often, that your fiancé could get here maybe in six months after filing. But I, I'd, I'd say it's probably closer to seven, eight months or so, and maybe 10, 11 months today for a marriage case. But again, it really depends on the embassy that, where the person is processing, and you have no control over that. Um, and then finally, you know, adjustment of status. I would be very careful about this. I would never want immigration in a million years to think that me or my, my husband had committed fraud, you know, to get a green card. 
So I would be very, very careful about um, very, very careful about that, and uh, go see an attorney for adjustment status for sure. Absolutely. And so I think that concludes our presentation. Is that right, Amy? Yes. If you do have any other questions regarding this topic, all you need to do is send me or Amy an email. And thank you for attending. Yes, thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.